God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, the angels bow before Him.
You are the final say, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah, you are worthy. You are able. You are mighty, Jesus. We worship you this morning because you have the final say. Even in whatever happens in our lives, Lord, you have the final say. Bless you, Jesus. We worship you, Holy Name, because you deserve all the glory. We exalt you. You have the final say. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To na kuwa. Yeah. 
worship you. Jesus, it's only you who can help us in our times of trouble. We declare you in our lives that Jesus, you're the one we run to when we have issues in our lives. We run to you and we are saved. We exalt you this morning because it's all about you this morning. Lord, it's only you who can save us from diseases. It's only you who can be able to protect us against the evil. It's only you, Jesus. It's only you, Jesus, this morning. It's only you, our Father. We bless you this morning. We exalt you, Jesus. It's only you. It's only you. It's only you, our Father. We exalt you. We bless you this morning. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, oh God. We worship you. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are.
bless you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Be exalted, King of glory. Oh, Lord, you are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. We thank you, Father. You are holy, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. You are worthy, O God. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. You are wholesome this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you are God. We thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Receive honor, receive praises. No one is like you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory. Oh, you are worthy, O God. Oh, we praise and honor you this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory. Oh, you are worthy, O God. You are gracious, my Father. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We praise you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bless you. We give you glory, honor and praise, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you this morning for your presence among us also, Lord. We thank you for that beautiful worship, O oh God. We thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. We bless you and adore you. Let your name be glorified forever, Lord. Even as we continue with this service, Lord, may your presence reign, O oh God. Let your presence reign, O oh King of glory. My Father, even as we move on with other programs, we are inviting your presence, O Lord, because without you we cannot make glory. We need you more than anything, King of glory. I say we lift the word of God into your hands this morning and the minister of the word this morning. We pray that, Lord, your anointing will fall upon him. And my Father, even us congregants, O Lord, we be able to have your, your touch this morning because we know you have something for us, O God. We thank you and we bless you, Lord. You are our God, O my Father. We return all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, Hallelujah. We thank God for the, his mighty presence among us. And we want to appreciate uh, the choir member, the worship team. As they see it, can we clap for them? They have done something. You can have your seats as we thank God for the move that we have had this morning. Let us be expectant to receive what he has for us this morning. And above all, I know we are not going back void. There's something that God is, God is going to do. Just begin and be attentive to receive exactly what God wants you to receive this morning. So I do not want to go further from here. I want to straight away welcome the minister of the word, who is our very own pastor, Nelson Barasa. Thank you. You are welcome. Amen. So this is a beautiful day the Lord has made, that we may be glad in it and rejoice. Amen? Amen. This is a special year that the Lord is preparing us step by step under the cosmos and focus around having to be able to pursue, be able to overtake, and be able to recover. Amen? Amen. Hold on that tightly. There is a special biblical and prophetic reason behind that particular focus for the year. This year, we are on the way to be able to pursue, and we are not relenting. And we know we are going to be able to overtake and recover. However, we also appreciate that the enemy is not in his worst or slumber position. He's trying all he can to ensure that he holds us back from our ability to be able to pursue. So you need to be sensitive. You need to be focused. You need to remain attentive because the enemy's desire is that he may hold us back from our journey and our focus of pursuing, overtaking, and recovering. So this morning, the Spirit of the Lord wants to speak to us in this area again. 
Many are the hindrances that are making us not to be able to pursue, to overtake, and to recover. However, we remain focused to that very fact. So I want you to join me to be able to appreciate what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us this day. Join me as we go to the Word of God in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. We are trusting the Lord to reveal to us a very unique fundamental in this work. The things that hinder us from being able to pursue, to be able to overtake, and to be able to recover. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore your children. Let's pause there and allow the Spirit of God to speak to us. The Bible says in other versions, my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. Praise the Lord. Perishing simply implies to us, according to our core focus, inability to be able to pursue, inability to be able to overtake, and inability to be able to recover. Praise the Lord. So we perish. We are not able to pursue as desired. We are not able to overtake. We are not able to recover. And so we are perishing along the line. So the Bible says in Hosea that my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. What kind of knowledge? My people are perishing for failure to know who he is, who the Lord is to us what he means to us in our pursuance and our call and our journey, what he means to us in terms of why he has called us. And so in that regard, we find ourselves perishing. We find ourselves not being able to pursue and to overtake because the knowledge is limited, making us not to be able to pursue. Think about the fact that our desire has been to be able to recover. Yet we are still struggling. Yet the church is struggling. The reason is because the Bible tells us we are failing to win this game because of lack of knowledge, because of failure to know he who has called us, why he has called us, what he purposes for us. We are perishing because of failure to know what is the purpose of our calling, what the will of God is. Today, you and me, we struggle a lot to appreciate the will of God in our calling and in our life. We struggle a lot to know what God appreciates, focuses for us. The will of God is the word of God. However, many times the enemy makes us not to be able to deepen our appreciation and our understanding of the word of God. We find ourselves reading and going to the word of God in a casual way as if it's a normality of where you have to do it. And that's why quite often you may hear somebody struggling even to read 10 chapters in a week because he has a focus of the fact that he just needs to read. But it is what? Anytime you prepare yourself prayerfully and go before the Lord and before this word, it opens you up. It shocks you. You hardly may be able to go even more than five lines in a given scripture before it breaks you down. The Bible says, we are struggling to pursue. We are struggling to overtake. We are struggling to recover because of lack of knowledge. Knowing what? He who has called us. The promises that the Lord has bestowed upon us. The will of God over our life. The purpose of our calling. That makes us not to be able to be able to win the journey and the run that we have over our ability to pursue to overtake and to recover. And so we see the word saying, my people, you are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And we see it refers to a defeated life for a Christian. You and me, we still fall short of the glory of God quite often because of lack of knowledge. 
in the knowledge spread out in the word of God, it opens up to ability to hold into a winning spirit. But quite often we find ourselves walking a defeated life because knowledge is limited. And how do we embolden ourselves in ability to know? Praise the Lord. And so it is about having to reject what the Lord has focused for us. And it refers to various desires. And so today we want to allow the Spirit of God to open to us in this area of pursuing, overtaking, and recovering. But appreciating that there are hindrances that hold us back. Even as we desire, as we long for the same, we find ourselves hold back. And in several other ways, allow us today, to allow the Spirit of God, to minister to us from two perspectives. The desire to know him. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. About the aspect of knowing him. The desire to know him. What did Paul say? I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, verse 11, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Praise the Lord. Paul talks about the desire to know him, that I may know him, and the power behind his resurrection. The deep knowledge of Christ is our plumb line. It's our level of standard. Paul says, one thing do I desire, that I may know the Lord, and the power behind his resurrection. That is the deepest level of knowledge. Knowing him and the power behind his resurrection. Who he is. What he means to us. Why he has called us. His will in our work. That is a strong desire of knowing him. And when we have that strong desire of knowing him, we are able to pursue. We are able to overtake. And we are able to recover. You cannot be able to pursue overtake and recover unless you have the deepest level of knowledge of who, who has called us. And that's why Paul says that this is my desire, that I may know him and the power behind his resurrection. Beloved, that was a bi the biggest level breakthrough to Paul, having to desire that I want to know him, but not just knowing him casually. The deepest level of knowing even the power that was behind his resurrection. That is where the victor was won. That is where we are today who we are. That is where today we can proud to say we are children of the Most High. Because of the work that was done and the victory that was achieved on the cross. That's why we normally sing and say at the cross where we first saw the light. And the burdens of our hearts had to be rolled away. So this was the, the desire of Paul. That he may be able to know him and the power behind his resurrection. How I pray that it may be my desire and your desire, even as we focus on the aspect of having to overtake and recover after having to pursue, we have to deepen our knowledge so that we don't perish and go further, join Paul in the desire of knowing him and the power behind his resurrection. Beloved, there is power of knowing the victory that was achieved at the cross. Once you are able to appreciate to that level, then you are able to retain the knowledge of that level and you are able to pursue. You are able to overtake and you are able to recover. So just like the servant of God, the church today have what we call the casual knowledge. Knowledge, what I would call a very, very casual, peripheral kind of knowledge of the Lord. And so we struggle to understand the deepest revelation around the reason why we have been called. We struggle to understand the deepest appreciation of the will of God over our call. We struggle to appreciate why the Lord has purpose for us to serve together with him. In this calling and in this ministry, we appreciate ourselves to be co-workers together with the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not be able to co-work with somebody unless you know the purpose of what binds you together. I and mean, unless you know what are the things he values most, what are the things he appreciates. And so you and me, 
Once we appreciate what our caller, the Lord Jesus Christ, values most, we have to deepen and understand to the best level possible. The Lord values our holy sum released to him, our obedience, our walk with no relenting, and many and many as portrayed in the word of God. And so it is you and me to always ask ourselves, what is our desire? We want to know him. We want to know the victory that was attained at the cross. And we want to know what he has purposed for you and me in the best way possible. Exodus verse 33 and verse 18. Moses talks about a prayer, makes a prayer of, that you show, may show me your glory and your way. The knowledge, knowing and appreciating and understanding he who he is and what it means. Psalms 42 and verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. David here talks about as the deer pants for the water brook or water streams, depending on the version that you are using. So do my soul pant for you, O God, a desire of knowing he who is that has called us. A desire of a deep appreciation and understanding of the knowledge of God. So we see Paul saying, just as the deer normally pants for the water brook, so do my soul pant for you. A deeper desire of knowing he who has called us. So that we may not be able to perish. So that we may not be able to lose this focus and fight. And so Paul opens up around that and says, as the deer pants for the water brook, so do my soul pant for you. So do my soul long for you. Longing to know you in the best way possible. Knowing you, your values, what you value most, what you prefer, your expectation of us. And in that, then we are able to be on a tight course of pursuing from a knowledge position. Quite often we could find ourselves pursuing, but not from a knowledge position. You are pursuing, but you even don't understand the strength and what you have in terms of ability to be able to pursue, overtake, and recover. And so, beloved, what are the knowledge areas that we need to appreciate? Knowing, knowing the will of God of our lives and of our calling. And there's no other, other place other than the word of God. This is the will of God. Quite often your fellow student brethren, they may be young in faith, and they are able to ask you, how do I know this is the will of God? And you find yourself trying to unpack what, how the word can be able to reveal to that. Or you find yourself trying to struggle around, try to help that brother or sister. One of the best reference points is to refer to that brother or sister to the word of God. That is the will of God. There is no any other revelation of the will of God other than the spoken word and the written word. Praise the Lord. Then knowing what our rights are in this calling. As children of God, we have rights that we need to appreciate and have a deeper understanding about. We struggle again a lot in terms of our ability to be able to pursue, to overtake, and to recover because we don't have a deeper appreciation and understanding of our rights as children of the Most High. Praise the Lord. You and me do have some fair knowledge. But here we are, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us. Deeper knowledge and appreciation of our rights. What is your right as a child of God? Where do you appreciate from that perspective? Amen? Again, we refer back to the written word of God. Inside the written word of God, there lies our right. And we need to know our rights. These are the promises that the Lord has bestowed upon you and me as a child of God. Once we know and hold on that, then we are holding on our rights. The world talks about various areas of right. You hear a lot around the children's right, the rights of disabled, the right of all these categories. 
There is the meaning. This is a biblically found position. If the world can be able to adopt this and be able to open it up until people can be able to stand and tell you, this is my right. What is your right as a child of God? You have to know your right. And it's nowhere other than in the word of God. These are the promises that the Lord has made. And you can be able to stand on the promises of God and speak the word of God back to him. God honors a child who is able to appreciate and know what he is entitled to. What his right is. You know you are entitled to healing and you are able to speak the word of God back to him. You know you are entitled to the favor because he has promised. Many men are the promises. Deuteronomy chapter 28 opens up in that. Those are areas of the right you and me holds. We cannot be able to pursue, to overtake and recover unless we hold it from a level of understanding and appreciating our rights. That's why you are able to speak to the enemy, telling the enemy, get behind me. Telling the enemy, when you think you are putting me down, behold, I'm standing. Speaking the word of God back to him. Those are the levels of the rights of the children of God. And they can only be appreciated from the word of God. Deepening our knowledge in the word of God. Psalms 119, 105. That this word will be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Deepening our knowledge of the word of God. This is what makes us be able to stand firm. And that when we commence on the journey of our pursuing, we are pursuing with all manner of confidence. We are pursuing because we know our right. We are not pursuing because we think we have been told, but because we know. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the second area as we prepare ourselves to, to allow the Spirit of God speak to us. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 6. It talks about loving the Lord with all your heart. And I was looking at this area from this perspective. The Lord talking about the third kind of love that can be able to differentiate and make our pursuance come real even as we decide to recover. Leviticus number 19 talks about loving your neighbor. So we see two dimensions of love here. Loving the Lord with all your heart. Two, loving your neighbors. And then now we see the Lord Jesus Christ bringing the third dimension of love. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44, we could quickly read there. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may become sons of the Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. The third dimension of love. The least talked about area of love. Quite often we refrain ourselves around the two. Loving the Lord with all your heart. Then loving your neighbors as you love yourself. Then there is this dimension that comes forth from the Lord Jesus himself. Love your enemies and pray for them. Praise the Lord. Our pursuance of being able to pursue, overtake, and recover calls for you to do it from a certain perspective, including the perspective of love. Praise the Lord. And here, the enemy, we should not just paraphrasing and seeing from the perspective of the devil, isn't it? But I know you, there are people who have offended you. There are people who don't bless your heart. There are people you just don't love. There are people who have go really in, in, inflicted injustice upon you. There are people who have really talked negatively. They have brought you down. People have done funny, funny things over your life. These are people, by all standards, your enemies, isn't it? Or those are in some category. They are enemies to your peace, enemies to your fairness, enemies to your joy, 
enemies to your ability even to serve God. They are many, isn't it? And so those people, we interact with them out there. And so uh, the, what the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to me, what are we pursuing? Is it the devil that we are restricting ourselves and in which manner? So these people and this manner of lack of appreciation is what basically we are talking about. That you have people who have offended you. You have people who have weighed you down. You have people you know they don't love you. You have people you know they are very negative over you. You have people you know they have talked very nasty things over your life. Really, really people who have risen up against you. Amen? Because you don't battle with the devil, you see, isn't it? It is through these people we interact with and the things you go, isn't it? And so uh, the Lord Jesus Christ brings in a dimension, the third kind of love here. Love your enemy and pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now you are asking yourself, how do I pursue, overtake and recover at the same time I'm being called for? To love and be able to pursue and recover my joy even as I pursue from people who really have made the joy disappear from me. And so look at it like this, brethren. We are in the journey of pursuing, overtaking, and recovering. But the secret of this run and this pursuance, the Lord says, love your enemies and be able to pray for them. It is at that point that biblically you are able to pursue, overtake, and recover. You cannot be able to do so as you continue holding unto people who have offended you, holding unto people who have gone against you, holding unto people who have really made you feel so bad. You know, there are people who make you feel so bad. People outside there normally say, that you would rather, uh, I'll be able to do what? Forget what you did, but I'll never forget what, how you made me feel, feel. So we have, even in our midst, we have people who still feel, somebody made you feel so bad. You, the pain he inflicted went away, but the feeling has always remained. The moment you hold at that point, your ability to pursue, to overtake, and recover is compromised. Praise the Lord. And that's why the Lord says, pray for your enemies. That is the secret that gives us ability to be able to pursue, to overtake, and to recover. So, unless you are able to pray for your enemy, you cannot successfully be able to pursue, overtake, and recover. There will always be a holding back. That's why we have this situation around racial discrimination. Because we are not able to pray for our enemies. We, hold, we have racial discrimination. We have tribalism. And you are not able to release your enemies. Even in this country, we have people who try to think they are enemies to each other. And therefore, they find themselves in a very, very awkward state, including Christians. Isn't it? And so, even us as children of God, we are still in the path of deliverance from several areas. Praise the Lord. If this country has to change, it is the church and the ministers to stand and be able to really help the leadership of this land. If today the ministers are able to pray and be able to help their congregants, feel deeply convicted over what they do, in their day-to-day -day life, I think we may not be, we would have done a very good favor to our leaders of the land. Yes. This corruption that takes place, it is Christians. As long as you are holding the enemy, your bullet and your recovery part is compromised. And that is the Bible, and that's the word of God. You don't forgive your enemy anytime you try to recover what you think he has taken from you. He points a finger at you and say, but there's something you have not let me. So somebody's holding has robbed away your joy. You are called for to pray and 
be able to pray for, he missed it. You don't do that, he'll remain holding you and you will not be able to recover. Somebody has taken away your peace unless you are able to pray for him. He has the right to say, hold on that and you will not be able to recover. So beloved, they are secrets of our pursuance this year. We are in for a good time. But we have to discover that the enemy is going to fight to hinder our ability to pursue, to overtake, and to recover. And this morning, the Spirit of the Lord is helping you and me to appreciate two fundamental areas. Deepening your understanding, your knowledge, and your appreciation of he who has called you. And when you deepen, that knowledge will always be a speaking point to you. That the, knowledge, the deepening in this word becomes the speaking point. You are about just to explode, the word speaks back to you. And you are able to refrain yourself. That is what we call practical Christianity. Praise the Lord. And so knowing him, that's why Paul says that I may know him and the power behind his resurrection. Praise the Lord. And that's why David talks about having to be able to pant over his knowledge and panting for the knowledge and the presence of the Lord. So, beloved, we are in for a good cause, but we have to discover that there are hindrances that will hold us back from being able to pursue, to overtake, and to recover. May God help us to be able to understand what are these things that are going to hold us back. And that's why he's saying the third dimension of love, loving your enemies. That's where you say the least touched on area. Loving you are? I know you, we say, when the, the word speaks to us in that area, you say, that word, I want to avoid it to the extent possible. You want to avoid it because you are not ready. But you are called upon to be able to go for that hard stuff. That is what it means to be a Christian that you have every area to feel I was infringed. My rights were infringed on. But yet you are able to stand and say, I'm ready to pray and forgive and move on. That gives you the ability to pursue with all manner of knowledge and victory. Praise the Lord. May God help us, beloved. This work of, this, our calling calls for practical work backed up by the word. It is not meant to be a theoretical work. It is not meant what the Bible says, that the church today, we are putting on the form of goldiness, but denying the power thereof. That's a theoretical work. But it needs to be very, very practical. And just appreciating that this work is personal and individual. We are here as beloved, as fellowshipers to fellowship and encourage each other. But at the end, it is personal and individual. Praise the Lord. Appreciating what the Lord values from us. What does he value most? Yes, we know the calling, but there are things he values. Obedience, top in the agenda of that. Love. Praise the Lord. Knowing the things the Lord values most. And really having those things become our lifestyle, our way, the way of a Christian. And that's why we use the word day. It's not a way. That should be our way. So our walk, a very practical way. Praise the Lord. And the Lord who is faithful is able to give us the victory. But we remain focused on the fact that this is the year of recovery. It is going to be a painful, painful journey. It is going to be a costly venture for us to be able to pursue, to overtake, and to be able to recover. 
And that's why today the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you about the secrets of this pursuance, knowing the Lord, ensuring that we have the knowledge so that we may not perish, and adopting the third kind of love, loving your enemies. So, beloved, we want to touch briefly in that one last area. Psalm 61 and verse 2. 61 and verse 2, the Bible says, From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a refuge and a strong tower against the foe. Praise the Lord. Our journey of pursuing, overtaking, and recovering will always be a journey that the Lord has to share through. But it's not a very easy one. Praise the Lord. It is confronted by lots and lots of uncertainty. And that's why we see this was also a psalm by David. David saying, from the ends of the earth, I call unto you, even as my heart grows faint. So we appreciate as we run in the effort of pursuing, overtaking, and recovering, it is not a one-kilometer run. It is going to reach, cause us reach levels of fainting. Praise the Lord. Our hearts are going to faint. However, there is hope. Praise the Lord. So when you are trying to recover something from somebody, it goes through some pain. And so the journey of pursuing, overtaking, and recovering from a spiritual perspective, it's going to be a painful journey. You will faint. That's why David says, my heart will reach a level where I faint. Praise the Lord. So people indeed have snatched from us our things and they are trying to run away with it. It is going to be a painful effort for you to pursue, to overtake, and to recover. But you will eventually recover because the Lord is on our side. Who can be against us? Praise the Lord. Hold on to that faith. For the, our faith is getting lifted. In this very time that we are in, that's why we are telling you, that the, Lord, that, our, that the Lord may be able to cause our faith to be lifted. Because the Bible says, in this last of the last days, they just shall live by faith. And faith becomes a crystal focus for our recovery, ability to be able to pursue and be able to recover. Let's stand on our feet. Our Father and our God, we thank you. And we bless you. Thank you for your word that has come forth. May you help us to diligently hold on into this run of pursuing, overtaking, and recovery. That is our prayer. On our own, we are not able. But as long as the Lord lived in us, you are our source of confidence. We will be able to see tomorrow. We will be able to overtake we will be able to recover all that the enemy has stolen from us. Our joy, our peace, our justice, we will be able to recover because that is according to your word and that is our right. We thank you and we bless you. May you help each one of us to ponder through this word that it may be able to be enriched in our hearts for the purpose of recovery at such a time as this. In Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. God bless you. Amen.